Well, I think I'm live. It's very hot here in my small part of the UK and the sun's just gone in. Oh joy. Now I can't see. Oh, am I going up on? Yes, it seems to be working. Okay, hello and welcome from a very warm and sunny West Sussex in the United Kingdom. Um, as always, it's Make It Simple Mondays and I will be sharing with you today a card, well, the cards I've made using, hi Kay, nice to see you, thank you for joining us. Um, cards I've shared, hi Heather, on the Facebook and blog post today, which are featuring the Peekaboo Farm. Hey Jill! Which also includes the, I beg your pardon, I've lost my train of thought now. Ha! Huh, what a surprise in this heat. My brain is just a mush. It's just too hot for me. So anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, right. Back to the, car the cards I made this morning. This week I'm going to be featuring Peekaboo Farm, which is a cute stamp set featuring farm animals. And the nice thing for me about it is they're open line images so that you can um, colour them in. So I'm going to show you two ways that I've coloured the cards in today. I'm also going to show you a little bit of pattern paper. The pattern paper uh, sale is on till the end of this month with stamping up and the paper I'm sharing you today has 15% off so it's a really good time to buy some. Okay so enough about me let's get to the interesting stuff shall we? Hang on I hope I don't make you go a bit squiffy while I try and change this around. Hold on oh where's the button that changes it? There it is. Okay I hope that wasn't too bad. Let's pull this down a little bit so that you can see what I've got in the centre of my screen. Hopefully, let me just wait for... There's a time delay between what I'm doing and what comes up on Facebook, so I have to be a bit mindful of that. Okay, so... The um, stamp set, as you can see, is... Absolutely the cutest thing going. It's also a photopolymer stamp set. Oh, the brick wall's just fallen out because I've been playing with it a lot. So it's really easy to line up, which is great. The cards I'm sharing this morning are these two. Now, <laughs> I've called them funky and traditional, based purely on the fact that I coloured my cow in in greys and dark greys and then I thought mm, I want a bright and breezy one so I coloured the brick wall in bright blue and I coloured the nose in bright pink and I gave him yellow splodges that's the wonder of being able to make your own cards you can colour them whatever colours you like so the, do you notice these in the background these are pattern papers and oh my are they gorgeous I'll push that to one side now this is called the hand penned pattern papers and as you can see one side is very floral lots of pretty flowers and gorgeous shades with lots of green very realistic but beautifully drawn if you look further back on the timeline of our Facebook page, you'll see that I shared a little video of these papers being painted and drawn by the art designer at Stamping Up Home Office. It's really interesting when you see how things are made, I think. Oh, where are we going? We should have six papers. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get 12 by 12 pieces. These obviously are not... 12 by 12 pieces uh, because they would be far too big to hold on the screen but the nice thing is these are quite busy when you and if you're new to stamping and card making they can be a bit intimidating but if you turn them over you have these gorgeous 
gentle, soft, more, they're not entirely geometric, well, there's, there's dots on the top and stripes, stripes and dots are my favourites, um, but we have them in beautiful soft greens and yellow and a darker green, pink, lilac, purple and peach, which I think are really pretty. So I'm going to use these and what I'm going to do is put the paper to one side and I'm going to first of all start off by cutting my card bases. So I'm going to get myself a piece of A4 cardstock and my paper trimmer. Now I like to do what I call temp fold cards, which is whereby you put your piece of paper in the trimmer portrait, so the long side going down the trimmer. I then take it across to the ten and a half centimetre mark and I cut and I have two equal pieces. I then pop them back in, lift the arm up, pop them back in and I score them at 14.85 and that, when folded, becomes my card base. Let's do this one. So you get two out of a sheet of A4. I'm using thick basic white card. Of course you can use any colours you like. I, I just happen to like white and I think white goes with most things. So that's all the cutting I'm going to do for today. I have done a bit of pre-prepping for this and I have made myself some... I cut myself a set of mats that are, oh let's check, uh, seven by nine centimetres and they're the panels that I'm going to stamp on and as you can see from here I've already cut and stamped four brick walls and sentiments they're all the same uh, but what I wanted what I really wanted to do was to introduce you to the characters that are in this set and show you how they line up on the brick walls. Now there is, uh, I don't know if you notice, there is one here that is slightly taller and that's for the llama because he's a little bit taller than everybody else so he needed a bit more space so we'll do him first. So I put my stamp down on the table so that it can relax. Being photopolymer they can get a little bent out of shape so if you just pop them onto your stamping surface and position your block on top, it'll be fine. I'm using Memento because I'm going to use some alcohol markers, our stamping blends from Stamping Up. And I'm hoping you can see this. You can see that I've inked him up. Can you see these two little dips in the brick wall? They are where the hooves go. So I'm going to, this might not be perfect because I'm not sitting directly over, but I'm going to push him down. Count one, two, three. And voila! My lovely little llama is poking his head over the brick wall. So next up, shall we do Mr. Ram? So again, we put, pop him down, flat side up, let him rest, pop him on the block, get our ink pad out, tap, 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 nice gentle tapping. And again, we're going to line him up. I use my grid paper to get, make sure things are straight, but I'm going to line up here for his hooves. One two, three, and there we have Mr. Ram. Coming up next, we have, oh, there we go, another piece of paper. We're going to have our horse. 
pony horse. I don't know quite what the difference is, but I'm sure someone will tell me. There we go. And again, we're just going to line him up so his hooves are in spaces. Press gently, count to three. One, two, three. And he's popped into the... His hooves are popped in nice and neatly. And you've already met the cows. And the last I'm saving for last is my favourite. It is... The Piggly Wig! <laughs> Years ago on a telly program, oh, there was a TV program called Extreme Shoppers. Oh, Extreme Couponing, I beg your pardon. And it was in America. And they went to all across America, but one of the shops, supermarkets they went in was called Piggly Wigglies. And I've loved the name of it ever since. I've always wanted to go in a Piggly Wiggly. How silly is that? But hey, <laughs> small things and all that jazz. One, two, three. And there we have him. So, now we get to colour. I'm going to show you two ways to colour in. Um, I'm going to leave Mr Piggy for last. I'm going to go for my horse, Dobbin. I'm going to use my watercolour pencils. Now, my watercolour pencils are quite elderly, but they still work beautifully. And I really like to use them for colouring in because they are soft and gentle. But I like a smooth finish, so in comes this little beauty. It's called a stamping let me just double check. No, they're called blender pens. They come in a pack of three. They're all double tipped, but you only need one tip. But my tip will come for using that in a moment. So let's get rid of that so I can actually see what I'm doing. So we are going to find all the pencils have colours on the ends. So I find it easier to, to just look for the colour rather than read the words. So I'm going to have a nice grey pony <coughs> and I don't want it to be too dark so I'm going to just colour it in very gently, very lightly. That's the nice thing about watercolour pencils. The colour, it's the pressure you put on is what gives you the colour. Now, as you can see, that I did that very swiftly. Now, this is where the magic happens with my little blender pen. I'm going to check it's clean. It has a nib on the same on both ends. And it contains a blending fluid that means when you colour over your colour pencils, can you see how it's all streaky here? Well, when I've gone over it with my blender pen, it loses that streaky look, which I think is rather nice. Now, I want to apply some colour directly in a small space. So what I can use is get the tip of the pencil and just apply the colour to the tip of my pen and it becomes almost like a felt tip but as you can see it has that I've made it deeper than the one before that I'm going to colour in here so I have a nice grey pony with a white nose but I want him to have a much darker forelock. Is that what they call them? I, can't, I don't know. Fringe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour that in with my black pencil. Like that. 
and then I'm going to take my pen and smooth out the colour. Now, when you've got these, to remove the colour, all you do is you scribble until it goes clear. And then your colour has been applied. Now, what colour am I going to do my brick wall? Hmm, I think I'm going to go for brown. Shall I go brown? Yeah, why not? So for this one, I'm actually just going to colour in around the, the stonework. I'm going to give him a little bit of an edge there. Now, again, I am going to be using my blender pen. I, it gets very confusing, doesn't it? They're called blender pens. And we have blends, which are alcohol markers, but you mustn't confuse the two. They are very different, different things. And they both have their place, as you'll see in a second, because I like to play with both. <laughs> but I'm just going to colour around here. How are you all doing? It's very warm here. I think I'm melting. And I've got to take my son up to the gym in a little while. So he's having his induction. Whew, I wouldn't fancy having to do a workout in this. I know some of you dedicated people do. But uh, it's not my idea of fun. I just fancy going and putting my feet in the paddling pool that we got up for the grandson yesterday. So here we go. We're just going to smooth out these lines with the pen, the blender pen. And what we may do, as the colour's being picked up, I may just go in and give some of these pen, these stones a little touch of colour. So I'm picking up the colour from around the stones and I'm just going to add a touch of colour to the inside of some of the rocks. Uh, I can't think what is it called? Dry, st dry, dry stone wall, wall, walling? Well, oh, yes. I see Heather's just come in from the garden. The lucky girl. Hope it wasn't too hot for you. There we go. So we have now got our, as you see, I've just cleared the colour off because I've just realised I haven't coloured in my horse's hooves. So we're going to use some black for his hooves. Blender pen and watercolour pencils are a great way to start your colouring in collection. Oh, look what I've just done. I've just made a mistake. I've just managed to get that all on there. Oh, dear. So you know what we need to do, don't you? We need to get our little trimmer. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Here is she. There she is. Let's get this little trimmer out. And we will just chop that piece off. Because I can. Because it doesn't really matter. It's a focal point it's not the entire piece okay so we have done our horse we're now going to go on to our blender pens now i've got a very small selection of blender blends here i am using light and dark petal pink light and dark smoky slate and light soft suede and the reason for this is because sheep are white. So I'm just going to put a touch of colour inside his ears. And I'm going to give him some little soft pink cheeks. He's going to need a light grey for his hooves. Now with blend, uh, blends, they're alcohol markers. So the colour lays down, sometimes a little darker than it dries, so don't panic. But there you've got it. How quick and easy was that? Super simples. 
Let's do Milama. He's pretty much the same. He's going to have a light petal pink on his ears and a little cheeky rosy cheek and some light smoky slate hooves. I keep wanting to say paws but they're not paws at all. I'll blame the sunshine and the heat. I'll say it's too much but actually it's just me because I'm a bit dappy. <laughs> So that's that one done. Now for my favourite, my little Piggly Wiggly. I'm going to take my light petal pink again, but I'm going to colour him in all over. I do round the lines first. This is not a masterclass in colouring. I am not an expert to say the least. I know some wonderful people like one of my fellow teammates, Lizzie Elizabeth Bennett, who is a superstar when it comes to colouring in. Uh, but I'm not. So this is just going to be one layer of colour. I am not blending the shades and giving it all the business. I am just colouring him in pink. I'm then going to take my darker, the dark petal pink. I'm just going to go on the inside of his ears and I'm going to do his snout. But I don't want to get the little white bit so I'm using the nib end rather than the brush tip because blends come with both. Okay, So we're going to have a nice grey Hooves again, as we we like a grey hoof here. Okay, so now I have three using blends and one using. I'm hoping you can see it. Hello, Heather. Oh, Heather Thomas is there too. <laughs> uh, I've used my watercolour pencils and blender pen for this horse. I've used my blends for these three. I haven't coloured the walls on these because I don't have a lot of time and I want to show you how different they can look when you choose the pattern paper to go on them. So let's have a look, go back to this pattern paper. So we've already used the green and we've already used the yellow. So we're going to put those to one side. We're not going to use those. We have got four animals and four pieces of paper. Who's going to go on where? Ooh. I don't think I really want the my pink pig on the peachy colour. It's called pale papaya. But I do quite like the ram on there. Do I want a pink pig on a purple piece or do I want a pink pig on a pink piece? Oh, I like a pink pig on a pink piece. What do you think? Any ideas? Hi, Lynn. Anybody got any suggestions? I think that's what I like for my pig. I quite like the llama on the lilac purple. Okay, and that's my horse on the green, or should we put the horse? That's better. What do you think? Well, you give you a minute to send me a message to tell me what you think. I'm going to stick my pattern paper onto my pre-made card bases. So literally, I use wet glue. I round the outside, a squiggle in the middle and centre it onto the thing. I cut mine so that they have a small white border all the way around. That's the way I like to do it. It's personal choice. Some people like to cover the whole front of a card, half a card, entirely up to you. You can use, we sell tape runners. We can, you can use double-sided tape. The choices are endless. 
but with wet glue what I call wet glue or in this case this is Tombow Mono multi mono liquid glue um, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room um, so if it's not 100% perfectly straight the first time you put it down you can move it around a little bit which I find very helpful okay so that's that one last but not least let's go for the pink so I'm going to ask my able assistant Andrea could you tell me please if anybody's said anything about what colours to put things on? Um, we've had one comment, it's your card, do it your way. <laughs> that sounds good. And when you said, yes, like your, like your colours. Right, okay. Well, in that case, we're going to have a pink pig on a pink card. So I'm going to just pop some 3D foam or dimensionals as we they're called in stamping up lingo on the back peel them off oh they come off nice and easily that's one of the things that I like about these very much and place him now well, let's use the grid paper to line up the card base so that we know we're getting it straight and then we're just gonna pop him center so there's our pig. Um, I can't remember which way around we said we were doing them now. Are we gonna put yeah, we're gonna put the horse on the green? I have just decided. So Dobbin is going on the green base because he lives in a green field, of course. Sorry. Oh, here we go. There are lots of ways of getting these off, but fingernails are the easiest in my book. There we are. There's Dobbin. And now we're going to have Llama Llama. Llama Drama. Are they llamas or are they alpacas? I don't know what the difference is. I know there is a difference, but I don't know what it is. Does anybody out there know? Can somebody tell me? Please? <laughs> I do like this uh, purple. It's got it's faded in areas, which makes it really, really beautiful, in my opinion. It, it's gorgeous. Okay, now oh, the dreaded 3D foam backings that get everywhere. Oh, I've had them on the stairs. I've had them in the bed. I've had them in my bra. I don't know how, but I managed to get them everywhere. It's just not fair. But here we go. So I hope you've all got a nice, simple dinner cooked and nobody to cook and nobody has to stand over a hot stove for too long this evening. It is certainly salad weather where I am. So after my trip to the gym that's what I shall be creating for dinner okay so let's get that out of the way so may I introduce to you please the members of the farm we got Daisy the cow she's there we have Dobbin the horse we have Percy pig we have Robert ram and we have Lily llama and I've just made those all up, so they mean absolutely, they're not real names, but hey. I hope you like them. I, find, I think these are great fun cards. I think they're a great set for people who enjoy colouring. I think they'll be fun to use with your children as we have the summer holidays coming up, or your grandchildren. I think they will make great cards for birthdays and newborns and anybody who likes animals so well that's it for me this week i hope you've enjoyed that and i hope you remember the difference between a blender pen is for 
watercolour pencils and ink pads because you can pick up anything that's made with water so an ink pad and the difference between that and a blends pen which is an alcohol marker so that's it from me take care enjoy yourselves have fun bye